Gary, thank you, and uh, thank you so much for allowing us to be here with you this evening. We'd like to make a presentation. We'd like it to be two-way. We'd like for you to interrupt us and uh, ask questions as we go about talking about your community hospital. To do that, let me tell you, I'm going to give you a little bit of history about CHC. <coughs> While we are a one-of-a-kind organization, the only one of its kind in the country, and uh, a little bit about what we would propose to our relationship with your institution to look like. And then my colleague Cindy Matthews, who is our Executive Vice President for Strategy and Planning, is going to go into a little bit more detail about the aspects of that proposed relationship. And then Wilson Weber, who is our Executive Vice President and Chief Operating Officer, is going to talk about four hospitals that we actually have relationships with that could be in some way similar to the relationship we envision to have with your organization here. Uh, let me, Cindy, would you, would you to drive to for me? I will drive and I'll also pass out some handouts if that's okay. That would be fantastic. I appreciate that. We do have each of our slides. We don't have an exhaustive slide presentation. We find that we'd like to talk more and hear from you as well as you hear from us. Then just look at slides and you'll find in uh, this packet of material that Cindy's giving you. Um, a listing of our individuals who work in our corporate office, as well as just uh, copies of the slides that we're going to share with you this morning. We have the privilege of working with tax districts, taxing authorities or hospital authorities, and uh, cities or counties who actually only govern the hospital. When you think about the organizations that we serve, uh, we focus on hospitals just like yours, small community institutions. We believe that health care should be locally rendered and locally controlled. And a key aspect of the uh, structure that Cindy will present will be the structure of that local board that essentially makes all the decisions relative <coughs> to your local institution. We were founded 16 years ago, and as Gary alluded to, I was the first employee of the, the organization. I um, did my training in administration at Baylor University Medical Center in Dallas. I was the president of Baptist Hospital in Knoxville, Tennessee for 10 years. And then 16 years ago came to head this organization. We have a unique founding in that we are a tax-exempt entity. We're a 50983 entity, which means we're an entity as designated by the IRS that is charged with supporting 501c3 are public institutions. Now that's an interesting concept. When you think about a health system that from a, from a system standpoint is a 501c3 if it's not for profit, and really controls all those organizations underneath it, I'd like you to think of us as that underneath organization that supports the entities, the 501c3 hospitals that we're charged to support. I like to think we're the flower pot. We provide the resources for each of the flowers to grow out of the flower pot. And each of those flowers is a hospital. The mission of our organization is just that, to preserve and enhance community-owned hospitals in three key words, in the least obtrusive way. The hospitals that we have entered into relationships with don't change their name to CHC. Many of the hospitals have a legacy name, a name that's identifiable for folks in that community, and we support keeping that legacy name and continuing that relationship because we are an organization who comes in from the outside and basically supports the organization to a point of becoming successful. <clears throat> Having dealt with a number of hospital districts and knowing a little bit about your organization, I know that the district has levied and collected taxes, and those taxes have gone to support this institution. And that's a model that we're extremely <coughs> familiar with. Well, we believe not just the support financially of your institution should be locally controlled, but the decisions about its operation should be locally controlled. So that if we were to enter into a lease with the district for your facility, the first thing that we would do is create a new 501c3 that would have a local board. When I say local board, seven or nine members, one individual from CHC would sit on that board. And if, in fact, you desire a relationship, for example, with a Lufkin or with another organization, there could be one representative sitting on the board from that organization. But the majority of members, seven of the nine, would be local residents. 
We always insist that there be local physicians on that board. And that's the board that makes all the decisions, develops the budget, hires the CEO with our assistance, but hires and fires the CEO, makes the decisions relative to the operation. What's going to be offered? What services will be discontinued? What kind of physicians are going to be recruited? That's the board, the local board, that makes the decisions relative to the future of your organization. We think that's really unique. The other thing is that when we enter into a lease relationship, whether it be for five years or 10 years or 15 years, we make a legal commitment at the outset of that relationship that whatever uh, the dollars, the assets that were raised, contributed during the time that we're in that relationship stays with the entity of that relationship ceases. If you entered into a five-year lease term with us and in five years you said, we want to go with someone else or we want to do this ourselves, all of the cash in the bank and all of the profitability that was uh, earned during our term here would stay with you. And you might say, well, then what do you get for having been here for those five years? We get an annual management fee. Our mission is such that we want to support local community hospitals, and so we have to pay the bills, but we get a fixed annual management fee for each term of the lease. We continue to recognize local banking relationships uh, such that we don't sweep cash to a centralized office. And it's this local governing body that's appointed that makes the decisions relative to how the dollars are spent in the local entity. Right now, we are the corporate member, and we would be the corporate member of that local 501c3 that at least from the district, your organization. We're the corporate member of five acute care hospitals and one LTAC. The LTAC that we're the corporate member of is actually a 51 bed LTAC, long term acute care hospital, that, that sits actually in the middle of uh, Trinity Mother Francis Health System, our, our hospital in Tyler, Texas. We manage six acute care hospitals. A number of those are those that Gary just talked about in Lockton and two LTACs. And we have uh, strategic support agreements with eight other different hospitals. One of the important things about noting the different relationships that we have is no two relationships are alike. The things that we would decide to do with you if we were so lucky as to enter into some type of discussion would be unique to this community and the structure that would make sense for this institution. It doesn't have to be one is for all and all is for one. It would be very different. I was just noting to my colleagues here as, as I started, we provided consulting services to over 35 hospitals in the past 18 months. I wondered why we were so tired. Uh, as you see on this next slide, those relationships have been provided in each of those um, states that are sort of dark brown there. Um, we are becoming known for the advocate for community hospitals, particularly as healthcare changes. One of the reasons we're becoming known for that is we believe that the medical staff, the community <laughs> institution, and the um, organizations within the community, for example, your surgery center, have to be aligned in the same direction. There's so much that can be accomplished if, in fact, the docs, the hospital, and the ancillary services being provided are all in the same strategic path. So we would see the opportunity here working with Gary and others to um, expand the, the um, employment of physicians, if in fact that's something that the local board endorsed and the local physicians were in support of, actually bringing that surgery center into operation in concert with the hospital. There are some opportunities for incremental fiscal success as well as alignment with those ORs, with your ORs here, that would make a lot of sense. So those are the kind of things that, particularly if we were to enter into due diligence with you, as perhaps a final candidate or someone you would like to talk to, we would come forth with a plan and say, this is what we would vision with your input for your local institution. Cindy? Mm -hmm. And please interrupt us. We'll come back to questions or whatever you want to have to respond to. And we, 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 um, I always have to say, Mike, feel free to jump in because he doesn't really need permission. There may be something he wants to add, which is good. Um, this is really a little bit about our corporate overview, the kinds of services that we provide. Um, we like to say we provide health where hospitals need it. And what that means is that hospitals are all very different. 
And so, uh, as Mike said, we don't really have a one-size-fits-all because each individual situation um, is looking for something a little bit different. Along the continuum of the things that we do at CHC, um, we do have a, a consulting, um, uh, uh, all of our staff provides consulting services to our uh, clients, and those may be a relationship like Gary talked about, that we started out with Memorial doing an operational assessment, helping them figure out how to improve financially and operationally, and that led into uh, a greater relationship.